Roger, most of us in youth ministry understand that we're in the business of uh, helping God's grace, being in community mm -hmm. with young people so that their faith forms. We call it faith formation. But mm -hmm. sometimes, it's, sometimes I've heard that phrase as faith shaping. Mm -hmm. What are some of the dynamics and elements of faith shaping? Mm. So for this, I'm drawing upon uh, an author who wrote a book, uh, golly, in the 70s, last century. Stephen Jones talks about faith shaping and how important that is to shape the life of faith, faith formation with young people. And Jones is interesting because he talks about two particular components of faith shaping, both of which are crucial to a whole and a thriving faith for young people. Jones says faith has to be near. Young people have to be near to faithful people doing faithful things. So part of his argument, and I, I'm persuaded by this, is that young people have to experience consistently faithful adults, other faithful young people doing faithful things. And those are the rituals, those are the things that you do and you, you experience because you're present faithful people doing faithful things. So for instance, um, I grew up as a pastor's kid uh, and throughout all of our lives, we've always bowed our heads and closed our eyes before we were gonna eat anything. And when I was a teenager, the most humiliating thing of course was to do that in public. And I hated that. Well, don't tell my parents if you ever meet them because they'll be way too proud about this. But now in my adulthood, Wherever I am in the world, whatever I'm doing, when I flew on the plane yesterday to get here and was served a bag of peanuts and fresca, I stop and I pray. I bow my head, I close my eyes, and just say a word of thanks. What I realize, and Jones would affirm this, is that I'm doing that because I was near to faithful people doing faithful things. So one component that's crucial in faith shaping is that young people are around faithful people doing faithful things consistently. The other component that's interesting, Jones says there have to be times when the faith is directly presented to young people, not in a coercive or shame-based or guilt-ridden way, but when young people are actually confronted and they're asked, so what is this faith in Jesus Christ mean to you? What does it mean for you to be a believer in these days? What does it mean for you to be a faithful Christian in these days? And, and these conversations happen best with persons for whom these young people already have affection and a relationship, and they know that they're not having to answer in a way that proves their worthiness, but they're open, honest questions. And often they work best when the adult or peer who's asking starts with their own testimony about what God means to them and how this faith is evident in their own lives. Jones says, what's interesting to me, that those of us who are in the mainline Christian traditions, we congregationalists, we Presbyterians, Methodists, Episcopalians, Lutherans, disciples of Christ, etc., we back off the directness because we don't want to be one of those people who are always in people's faces. And we rely, he says, too heavily on nearness. He also then indicts fairly, I think, his own evangelical community and says, you know, our problem is we never just let nearness happen. We're always direct. We're always in young people's faces and saying, how's your walk with the Lord? How's your walk with Jesus Christ? How are you living for Christ today? And Jones says we need both of those. We mainline Christians, we've got to be more open and able to directly address the question of faith with young people. And our sisters and brothers who are more evangelical, self-identified evangelical, they have to be more open to just letting young people be near to faith, be around faithful people. Those two things in tandem, complementary, are crucial for faith shaping. And I appreciate what he has to say about that.